naked. I think it's absolutely genius how it works. The 75. It's not pretty. Huge trailer. Quick stone trailer up there. The 936 is being de -crispitized. And it, it looks kind of naked now. But at least you can see the black paint better. So I'm just taking the last bits off. And we've been clever this year. We're actually putting everything in one place in a box. I'm going to put it up in the loft so that next year we don't have to spend thousands to get on lights. So the biomass on its way out the yard. It's naked. I think he's going to give it a wash off now. Looks well now, it's wet and shiny. It's going to get the brake cleaner though on these wheels here. Get that out of it. The glue. Andrea's just on the fast track, moving a little bit of stone round. Matchy, matchy, but you can actually see Richard Weston. Orange is not the same as JCB, yellow, but it still looks well. Just loading this wood up on the trailer for on the barn doors, where we've read on the barn, to stop the sort of the gaps between the timber boards. But I have a feeling, because we're made of Christmas tree for the front of the fence, I'm going to be a little bit short now. I'm going to have to go get some more roof patterns. Go on, what's the answer then? Which has got some new lights for his Merlot. They fit in the existing holders and then they a replacement for the top ones up there. See what they look like when they're on. Had some wood chip go out, now there's a load of oil seed rape getting loaded. Dad's just loaded a bit of oil seed rape and Andrew's just tidying up at the back with the loading shovel. That clamp down there is spun on that panel. And it's been pushed in. So that one's barely sat on it. So we're going to jack it up with this high lift jack and then shove it back in. But it's got that on the way, in the, in the way. So we're just going to unbolt it. I don't know what that's for. We'll take that off and then that'll fit in to the ratchet it up to that handle and then hopefully we'll get it back together I don't know who invented that but it's absolutely genius how it works so much so you can't even work out how it works it's a bit like a bale and knotter get that into there to push it before it hits the pillar. No, I've hit the pillar. I'll have to get on a better angle. Let's see what that does now. Nearly. Link. Ready! There we go. Nearly. Gordon with a little load. Good job, them Christmas trees are fluffy because he's just driven over it. Listen to the noise of the 75. Another good sounding engine. I bought that jack in the summer and I've not used it yet. But the plan is when you're taking two trailers to the field or you want to bring a trailer back because they've got draw bars on the back of these trailers that swing down. If you've not got a telly, I'll know you with you to lift him. Hopefully you could lift him with this jack. So we'll try it now and see. Right, I'll prompt you over there. Let's see.
taking this green film off these lights underneath the glass. I think it was really effective because it lit up this whole area without having to thread lights all the way around it. It's just off Amazon, it's just green film they use for stage lighting. It's just duct tape done. I found this piece of plastic years ago in a field. I think it's out of a bus stop. Anyway, Sam's gonna clean it and put it in the brew room door because the brew room door window got broken years ago. Got the resin gun, we're just gonna go and push some slates back on the roof and try and glue them down. It's got the basket here to lift me up, got my harness on. I'm just gonna sort these slates out on the roof that slipped. I'm hoping that I can slide them into place. Sorry, get the sun out of your eyes. Hope I can slide them into place and then put a bit of resin to stop them slipping back down again. I'd rather have to take them all off, put the nails in, and then we'll start at the bottom and work my way to the top. I just some people put a strap underneath it, a bit of lead and bend it over. You can see in places where that's bent up start to bend over time so I'm hoping that that resin will be like the modern day fix for it but we'll try it anyway that was a big hole now so push that slate up push that one in put another one in put a bit of resin around and hopefully that'll do for that problem with this two pack resin stuff is it goes off so fast the nozzles that mix it which is that thing there where to zoom in, block up when you're using it slowly so I'm having to squirt it out the tube mix it by hand with a stick anyway that will set like concrete now so that'll stop that slate slipping down and it also dries the same color as the slate so hopefully that'll do but i think i've done all this side of the gable now that one's a bit dodgy i need to sort this one here don't i then we'll go that side then nice day now this one here is probably one of the worst holes nearly a foot square well L shape in it, so it's nearly two foot by two foot. Quite pleased with that, good as new. Go and do these bits now. Something tells me there's a few missing here. So we've got that one, that one, that one, and then it's quite a big hole. So luckily, I've got some spurs, and when we re roof that, here's a perfect day for being on the roof because it's quite still. Anyway, that's the big hole done and the other big hole done. The bit of a mismatch, gonna to have to do something here. Sort that out. And there's a few slip there as well. But it looks a lot better than it did when I got here. It's not pretty, but should be weatherproof now. It's kind of rustic. Has anyone got any ideas what to do with that shed there? Because the pillars have rotted away on it. That wheat looks well though, doesn't it? Apart from the flood, isn't it? A few volunteer beans there. Bit of a wet patch there as well. Lots of drain really cutting across to that pond. So the other farm is sort of over there somewhere. Follow that road. Nice Fiddler's Ferry power station. So that's the bit of um, roof batten now on the door, so you can't see through because it's like warped a little bit. But it's looking well. Little few little bits there where it stops short that just need that out of that piece there trimming up. But yeah, I think it definitely needs a clock or at least a weather vane. Simon's here with this huge trailer to get a load of wood chip on his 939, which is an absolute animal. Shame it's not black but it's reverse drive so you can spin the seat and the dashboard completely completely round so you pull that handle there that lifts up hinges there and the whole thing turns round takes all the pedals with it and then you can drive it backwards or if you've got like rear mounted machinery like a forestry mulcher or a wood chipper and a crane and stuff you can work it all from the back window it's pretty trick we used to have one like that. The only thing is it did annoy you a little bit because you have that on your heels all the time for climbing in and out. But good option to have on them. The uh, early MB tracks could do... Well, sorry, not the early MB tracks. The bigger MB track models also had reverse drive. If you didn't know. You do now. Quick stone trailer update. Andrew's given it several coats of paint now. Painted the front black where we made the cage. We haven't got the hydraulic pipes yet because we keep forgetting, but... I think it looks a lot better than it did the other week, which is what it, this is what it looked like the other week. 
So, yeah, in police of that. You know, Sam's outside with his air rifle that he's got for shooting pigeons, and he had a padlock balanced on a piece of metal by the combine, and he was trying to shoot it. I said, well, what if you miss? You'll hit the combine. He went, no, I won't miss. I said, well, I'll tell you what, we'll put the padlock on the bin, then if you miss, you'll hit your car. Anyway, he changed his mind then and decided that it wasn't a good idea shooting the way he was. So, yeah, if you've got an air rifle, don't shoot with the combine behind it. He didn't miss, but he only just got it. Not the point, still got it. <laughs> That's turned out well, so we'll get some pipes for that tomorrow. Get it out, give it a try. So thanks to everyone that's been watching today. Loads of new subscribers again. Don't forget to say where you're watching from. And hopefully tomorrow we'll get a little bit more work done. We've got a bit of grain going out as well. And the birthday bumper today is the outro. So here it is. And happy birthday to my Uncle John. <laughs>